Here we have a nice patch of shaggy ink caps, Caprinus comatus. A good edible mushroom that's quite common. You'll find it in grasslands and open woodlands like this. And I especially see them on grass verges alongside roads. I class these as a beginner mushroom because they're quite distinctive looking. The only potential look-alike is the magpie ink cap, which has a similar shape but has light scales on a very dark background. Some guidebooks will say magpie ink caps are poisonous. Some will say edible with caution. Personally, I'd say don't eat the magpie ink caps. When they're young, they look kind of like a clutch of dinosaur eggs or something poking up through the grass or leaf litter. When they're younger, they're quite an elongated oval shape and the cap's white and it's covered in these shaggy scales. If you look at the very top of the mushroom, it's usually a little bit darker, like a light brown colour. And the tips of the scales are the same colour as the top of the cap. This is quite a good patch here because there's quite a few mushrooms in different stages of growth. So these are really young ones here, just poking out through the leaf litter. As they mature, they grow up and you'll see the stem poking out there. And then the cap starts to roll up from the bottom upwards and turns black. And then eventually it flattens, so you just get like a plate like this. So these are called ink caps because you can actually make ink from these. The caps pretty much turn to liquid. And this is ink here. This is called deliquescing as the cap turns to liquid. If you cut them in half, you see when they're younger, they have nice white flesh. So the gills are white. As they start to mature, you see they will go a bit more like a salmony pink color. And then eventually they'll start turning brown and black. These are a good edible mushroom when they're younger, I'd say up to about this stage. Once the caps have started to roll up, they're not really any good to eat anymore. They're really good pan fried. I usually have them in stir fries. One word of caution though, when you pick them, it's a good idea to eat them the same day. If you leave them in the fridge for a few days, you might get a bit of an inky mess. You may have heard that it can make you ill if you consume alcohol when you've eaten ink caps, but this doesn't apply to the shaggy ink cap. It's the common ink cap that if you consume alcohol a few days before or after eating the mushroom, it can cause a reaction and severe poisoning. But shaggy ink cup doesn't cause this reaction. Here's a absolute gourmet edible mushroom. This is Hen of the Woods, and this one's in pretty much perfect condition. And there's a younger one on this side. So there's a couple of mushrooms that you can mistake this for from a distance and they're all mushrooms that grow at the base of trees. First of all, the giant polypore, as I've covered before, which grows at the base of beech trees normally. This one, Hen of the Woods, pretty much always grows at the base of oak trees like this. 
and the other one is cauliflower fungus which hopefully I'll cover in a video soon and that pretty much only grows at the base of pine trees. Giant polypore and cauliflower fungus are both edible anyway so there's not really anything that you'll confuse us with that's poisonous. So hen of the woods not to be confused with chicken of the woods which looks nothing similar and funnily enough on the oak tree next door you can see there is a chicken of the woods growing there. The fruit body of hen of the woods are made up of small fronds that form a large cluster and they can weigh several kilos each and the fruit body can grow to around 50 centimeters across. The upper surfaces of the fronds vary in color from light grays to dark browns and they have concentric zonal coloring. And underneath it has pores that are white when young and slightly yellowing with age. You only want to eat hen of the woods when it's nice and young like this, otherwise it becomes tough and leathery. The flesh is white and it has a pleasant mushroomy smell when it's young. It's one of my favorite mushrooms and a single fruit body can provide meals for a week. It's best sauteed, but also good dried and powdered for stock. This is a bay belit, a good edible mushroom that's fairly similar to a penny bun. So they're considered almost as good as a penny bun, but not quite because the flesh is a bit softer and the taste isn't quite as good. But the good thing is they're much easier to find. So you can find them in pretty much any woodland, but they're most associated with conifers, especially pine and I find them a lot around Douglas fir. So this time of year when I go looking around a Douglas fir plantation like this I'm almost guaranteed to find bay beliefs and a lot of them. The cap of the bay beliefs is very similar to the penny bun or porcini it's usually a bit darker brown and when it's wet it's very slimy and they have quite a velvety feel as well. They're generally a bit smaller than penny buns. The caps usually grow up to about 15 centimetres across at the most. And they're quite spherical when young and then flatten out as they mature. It's easier to identify a baby elite by looking underneath. So the pores, even on quite young specimens, start off light yellow. A good identifier for them is if you press down on the pores, when you take your thumb away, they'll go blue. Another good identifier for bay beliefs, if you look at the stem, you get a grainy pattern that looks kind of like a wood grain effect and they're like vertical lines going up the stem and also there's normally a paler band around the very top of the stem The flesh of a bay belete should be white or sometimes quite a light yellow. See there it's got a little bit of a yellow tinge. And sometimes after cutting you can get a little bit of a blue staining just above the pores and just at the very top or the apex of the stem it can sometimes go a little bit blue. So there you see on this one that's a bit more mature, after about 30 seconds you're starting to get this blue staining just above the pores. 
and this one's just getting a little bit of the blue staining. As I said before when I was talking about the porcinis, there are some elite mushrooms that stain blue that are poisonous, such as the devil's belete and the rooting belete. Now they don't really look anything like these bay beletes, but of course if you have any doubts then just leave them. That's a lovely one that. So there's absolutely hundreds of these in this woodland. So if you like porcinis, but you don't have much luck finding them, then I really do recommend learning the Bay Belite because they are quite easy to find. This is porcelain fungus, a nice looking edible mushroom that you can find in late summer and autumn. You can see where it gets its name from, it really does look like porcelain, it looks very delicate. They're quite an easy mushroom to find this time of year. Just go into a beach woodland and look for dead beach and it's a good chance you'll find these mushrooms. They are very common and they pretty much only grow on dead beach. They're a very distinctive looking mushroom. They're almost translucent and you can see striations at the edge of the cap and that is the gills underneath that you can see through the cap. They're normally very slimy When they're younger, like this, they start off almost spherical and then they go convex and then they flatten out as they mature and they grow up to generally around 10 centimetres across the cap. The gills are white and very distant or not crowded and they are adnate or attached to the stem and you can see they're very thin fleshed it's mostly gills a good identifier for porcelain fungus is that the caps are almost always horizontal no matter where they are because the stem will curve round so that the cap stays horizontal. The stems are usually a bit too tough to eat, I just eat the caps. The stems are thin and they have a ring and the stems usually white and smooth above the ring and a bit darker and fibrous below it. A lot of people avoid eating white gilled mushrooms but I'd say the porcelain fungus is pretty much a safe beginner mushroom as long as it's growing out of wood not straight out of the ground specifically beech and it's got white slimy caps then there's not really anything that you can mistake this with. This mushroom can grow in really big flushes. They don't really have a distinctive flavour and it's best to wipe off some of the slime with a cloth before cooking. But because they can be found in vast numbers, I use them to bulk out other mushroom dishes. I've said in previous videos that 
it's a good idea to look around beech trees this time of year because there's so many different fungi that grow on or near beech. All these branches there is where the porcelain fungus is growing. And then there's another edible species around here. So these mushrooms camouflage really well in amongst the dead beech leaves. As you can see one there. Have some younger ones here. These are amethyst deceivers. Amethyst deceivers are a very common mushroom in beech woodland in autumn and early winter. They're a lovely purple colour all over and the caps can grow up to around six centimetres across. The gills are the same colour as the cap and they're very distant. And just like the porcelain fungus, the gills are adnate or attached to the stem. The flesh is the same colour as the cap and the stems are also purple and often covered in white striations. They don't have a strong flavour but they are a nice edible and they keep their colour quite well when they're pan fried. Just be sure to research the poisonous lilac fibre cap before eating this mushroom. They can look fairly similar from the top but the lilac fibre cap will have crowded gills that are brown rather than distant gills that are purple like the amethyst deceiver.